10 Signs of the End Times Happening Right Now Around the World Are you prepared to uncover a truth that could completely transform the way you see the world? What we're about to share may seem controversial, but it's a reality that many choose to ignore. Here at Sacred Revelations, we believe the signs of the end times are no longer distant possibilities, they are happening right before our eyes, faster than we could have imagined. But don't let this alarm you. Understanding these signs isn't about fear, it's about discovering a deeper purpose and tapping into spiritual strength like never before. In today's video we'll unveil insights that will challenge everything you thought you knew about the world around you. This journey will not only strengthen your faith but also reshape your perspective on the extraordinary times we are living in. Every second of this video holds crucial knowledge, so make sure you stay until the end to experience a powerful prayer that will anchor these truths in your heart. Before we begin, I invite you to join our growing community by subscribing to Sacred Revelations. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video. If this message inspires you, please leave a like, share your thoughts in the comments and spread it to your friends and family. Together we can share these revelations far and wide. Now, imagine starting an ordinary day, turning on the news only to see headlines about looming wars, unprecedented natural disasters, rapid technological changes that challenge ethical boundaries, and an overwhelming sense of chaos. It sounds like a scene from a movie, but this is our current reality. These events align with biblical prophecies unfolding in real time, calling us to be spiritually alert. Jesus' words in Matthew 24 verse 33 resonate powerfully today, when you see all these things, know that he is near at the doors. Never in history have the signs been so globally evident as they are now. From the rise of technology steering us toward a unified global system to extreme climate changes echoing biblical warnings, each of the signs we discuss today forms part of a prophetic puzzle that is being revealed right before our eyes. Join us on this enlightening journey, one that will prepare you for what lies ahead. The Apostle Paul warned us in 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 5 about what the last days would be like. In the last days terrible times will come. Men will be selfish, covetous, boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, ungodly, without love of family, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, cruel, enemies of good, traitors, rash, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his power. Look around you. Isn't that exactly what we're seeing? The urgency of this moment cannot be underestimated. We are at a spiritual crossroads, where every decision we make has eternal implications. Jesus warned us in Matthew 24 verse 42, Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. This vigilance is not a call for fear or panic, but for heightened spiritual awareness and a life aligned with God's purposes. Each sign we will discuss today is a vivid reminder that time is short and eternity is at stake. We can't afford to live as if we had all the time in the world. The prophet Isaiah declared, Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Isaiah 55 verse 6 This is the time to seek God with all our heart, mind and strength, recognizing that the events around us are not mere coincidences but prophetic fulfillments that demand our attention and response. As we move forward on this journey through the ten signs of the end times, it is crucial to understand that we are not just observing distant or abstract events. Each sign we will discuss has direct implications for our lives, families, and communities. From the geopolitical shifts that shape nations to the moral transformations that affect our core values, these signals touch every aspect of our existence. The Apostle Peter reminds us in 2 Peter 3 verses 11 to 12, Since everything will be thus done away with, what kind of people must you be? Live in a holy and godly way, looking forward to the day of God and hastening His coming, this is not a call to abandon the world but to a deeper and more meaningful engagement with it, always in the light of eternity. Each sign we will see is a call to live with purpose, integrity, and a sense of spiritual urgency. It is important to note that the study of the signs of the times is not an exercise in idle speculation or sensationalism. It is a biblical commandment. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for not knowing how to interpret the signs of the times. Matthew 16 verse 3. In the same way we are called to be like the sons of Issachar, who knew how to discern the times. 1 Chronicles 12 verse 32. This discernment is not only intellectual but profoundly spiritual and practical. Each sign we examine should lead us to deep reflection. How am I living in the light of eternity? Am I ready for Christ's return? Am I fulfilling God's purpose for my life in these last days? These are questions that we can no longer postpone or ignore. The time to wake up is now. As Paul exhorts in Romans 13 verses 11 to 12, 
and do this knowing the time for it is now time for you to awake from sleep, for our salvation is now nearer than when we accepted faith. The night is past and the day is come. Let us therefore reject the works of darkness and put on the weapons of light. As we delve into the ten signs of the end times, it's crucial to maintain a balanced perspective. We must not fall into the error of setting dates or making specific predictions about Christ's return. Jesus was clear in Matthew 24 verse 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. However, this does not diminish the importance of being attentive and prepared. Each sign we will discuss is like a piece of a prophetic mosaic, gradually revealing the bigger picture of God's plan for the last days. Our responsibility is to recognize these signs, understand their meaning in light of Scripture, and adjust our lives accordingly. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 4 to 6, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day, we are not of the night or of darkness. Let us not sleep therefore like others but let us watch and be sober. As we prepare to examine each of the ten signs, it is essential to understand that they do not exist in isolation. These signs intertwine, forming a complex prophetic fabric that points to the culmination of time. We'll look at how seemingly unrelated events, from technological advances to climate change, from geopolitical conflicts to cultural transformations, converge to create a scenario that strikingly aligns with biblical prophecies. This alignment is no coincidence but a testimony to the accuracy and truthfulness of God's Word. As 2 Peter 1 verses 19-21 states, And we have the word of the prophets even more firm, to which you do well to be attentive, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. As we delve deeper into this crucial study, remember, knowledge of the signs of the time should not lead us to fear or anxiety but to a deeper faith and a renewed commitment to God and His mission. Jesus assured us in Luke 21 verse 28, Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption is near. Each sign we will discuss is a reminder of God's faithfulness and the assurance of His promises. It is a call to live with purpose, to be light in an increasingly dark world, and to proclaim the hope of the gospel with urgency and compassion. We are on the verge of monumental events in redemptive history. The question is not whether we are living in the last days but how we choose to live in them. May this study not only inform our minds but transform our hearts and actions, preparing us for the glorious return of our Lord Jesus Christ. In an increasingly fast-paced and interconnected world, the signs of the end times manifest in subtle and profound ways, often going unnoticed by the unsuspecting eye. The first of these signs, and perhaps the most significant, is the growing spiritual apathy that pervades our society. As Matthew brings in chapter 24 verse 12, the love of many will grow cold, this cooling is not just a metaphor but a palpable reality that manifests itself in indifference to spiritual issues and in the unbridled search for momentary satisfactions. The challenge we face is not only to recognize this sign but to understand its roots and implications for our spiritual journey. Technology, while a blessing in many ways, has inadvertently become a catalyst for this spiritual distancing. Social media, smartphones, and the internet have created a world of superficial connections, where the depth of relationship with God is often sacrificed on the altar of convenience and instant entertainment. Paul, in his wisdom, warned of the dangers of the last days in 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 5, describing people as lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. This prophecy is being fulfilled before our eyes, as we see a generation more and more inward-looking and less God-focused. Materialism, another troubling sign, has infiltrated every aspect of our lives including the spiritual realm. The pursuit of possessions and status has become so dominant that many have lost sight of the true spiritual treasure. Jesus warned us of this danger in Matthew 6 verses 19 to 21, reminding us not to lay up treasures on earth, but in heaven. However, in our consumer society, the line between need and greed has become dangerously blurred. This materialism not only distances us from God but also creates a spiritual void that we try to fill with earthly things, perpetuating a cycle of dissatisfaction and endless searching. Moral decay, evidenced by the normalization of behaviors once considered taboo, is another alarming sign. Isaiah prophesied of a time when evil would be called good and good evil, Isaiah 5 verse 20, and we are witnessing the fulfillment of this word. 
The erosion of family values, the trivialization of violence, and the sexualization of culture are symptoms of a society that has lost its moral compass. This decline is not just a social phenomenon but a profound spiritual indicator, signaling a collective departure from divine principles. The proliferation of false doctrines and the rise of false prophets, as Jesus warned in Matthew 24 verse 11, is another unmistakable sign of the end times. In an age of abundant information paradoxically, truth has become increasingly difficult to discern. Doctrines that are pleasing to the ears but far from biblical truth are quickly gaining ground. Paul warned of this in 2 Timothy 4 verses 3-4, predicting a time when people would refuse to listen to sound doctrine, preferring teachers to tell them what their ears want to hear. This scenario calls for keen spiritual discernment and an unwavering commitment to the truth of Scripture. The increase in the persecution of Christians in various parts of the world is a painful but significant sign. Jesus predicted that his followers would face opposition and suffering for the sake of his name, John 15 verse 20. Today we see this prophecy being fulfilled in dramatic ways, from violent persecution in some countries to more subtle forms of discrimination and marginalization in supposedly tolerant societies. This sign reminds us that the path of discipleship was never promised to be easy but that faithfulness in the midst of adversity is a powerful testimony to the reality of the kingdom of God. Global unification, both political and economic, while seemingly beneficial, carries with it seeds of prophetic concern. Daniel prophesied about a global empire in the last days, Daniel 7, and current trends in globalization and international governance seem to point in that direction. While unity can be positive in many ways, we must be mindful of the spiritual implications of a world system that potentially opposes the values of the kingdom of God. This development calls us to a delicate balance between being salt and light in the world and maintaining our identity as citizens of the celestial kingdom. Finally, climate change and natural disasters, increasingly frequent and intense, echo the words of Jesus about the signs of the last times. In Luke 21 verses 25 to 26, he speaks of signs in the heavens and distress among the nations, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. While scientific and political debates continue, we cannot ignore the spiritual dimension of these events. They remind us of the fragility of creation, the need to be responsible stewards of the planet God has entrusted to us, and most of all, the urgency of being prepared for Christ's return, keeping our hope firmly anchored in Him, regardless of the circumstances that surround us. The study of the signs of the end times is not merely an exercise in prophetic curiosity but a call to spiritual vigilance and personal transformation. As Jesus warns us in Mark 13 verse 33, we must watch and pray, for we do not know when the time will come. This vigilance is not passive but an active posture of discernment and preparation. Every sign we observe around us is an invitation to deepen our faith and align our lives with divine purpose. Understanding these signs should lead us to a renewed commitment to God and His mission for our lives. The first sign, the global spread of the gospel, fulfills Jesus' prophecy in Matthew 24 verse 14. We live in an unprecedented era of missional outreach where technology allows the message of Christ to reach the ends of the earth. This breakthrough is not just a human accomplishment but the fulfillment of the divine plan. As Christians we are called to actively participate in this great commission. Whether through personal witness, support for missions or the creative use of technology to share the gospel. Each of us has a crucial role in this expansion of the kingdom of God. The second sign, the increase of wickedness, reflects Paul's warning in 2 Timothy 3 verses 1-5. We observe an erosion of moral values and an increase in violence and selfishness on a global scale. This scenario, although challenging, should not discourage us but motivate us to be light in the midst of darkness. As followers of Christ, we are called to maintain our integrity and love, even when the world around us seems to fall apart morally. Our response to this sign should be a life of holiness and compassion, demonstrating the character of Christ in all our interactions. The third sign, the unprecedented technological advances, can be seen as an indirect fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy about increased knowledge in the last days, Daniel 12 verse 4. Technology, while neutral in itself, has the potential to be used for both good and evil. As stewards of these advancements, we must use technology in ways that glorify God and benefit humanity. This includes being aware of the dangers of technological dependence and falling away from genuine human relationships and relationship with God. The fourth sign, climate change and natural disasters, echoes Jesus' words about earthquakes in various places, Matthew 24 verse 7. While we must be careful not to attribute every weather event directly to prophecy, 
The frequency and intensity of these events remind us of the fragility of creation and our responsibility as stewards of the planet. This sign calls us to reflect on our role in preserving the environment and preparing to assist those affected by natural disasters by manifesting the love of Christ in practical actions. The fifth sign, Israel's resurgence as a nation, is a significant prophetic milestone. The restoration of Israel, foretold in passages such as Ezekiel 37, serves as a powerful reminder of God's faithfulness to His promises. This sign not only validates the accuracy of biblical prophecies but also reminds us of Israel's ongoing role in God's redemptive plan. As Christians, we are called to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and to understand the profound significance of this historical development in the light of Scripture. The sixth sign, the emergence of a unified world order, reflects the prophetic visions of Daniel and Revelation. As we observe global trends of political and economic unification, we must maintain a balance between engagement with the world and fidelity to the principles of the kingdom of God. This sign challenges us to beat crafty as serpents and simple as doves, Matthew 10 verse 16, navigating wisely in an increasingly interconnected world without compromising our identity in Christ. The seventh sign, the increase in persecution of Christians, fulfills Jesus' warning that his followers would face opposition, John 15 verse 20. This sign, while painful, is a testament to the authenticity of our faith and an opportunity to demonstrate Christ's love and forgiveness. Persecution calls us to a deeper faith and a more intense dependence on God. As Paul reminds us in Romans 8 verses 35 to 39, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, not even persecution. This sign challenges us to stand firm in our faith, supporting our suffering brothers and sisters, and being courageous witnesses to the gospel, regardless of the circumstances. As we contemplate the signs of the times, we are called to a deep reflection on how these events impact our daily lives and our spiritual walk. The Apostle Paul exhorts us in Romans 13 verse 11 to understand the time in which we live, warning that our salvation is now nearer than when we accepted the faith. This urgency should not lead us to panic but to a renewal of purpose and commitment to God. Every morning we wake up in a tumultuous world is an opportunity to be ambassadors for Christ, bringing hope and love to a world that needs it so much. Technological advancement, one of the most evident signs of our era, brings with it unique challenges and opportunities for the contemporary Christian. While social media and global connectivity can be powerful tools for spreading the gospel, they also present pitfalls of distraction and spiritual superficiality. As stewards of this technology, we are called to use it wisely and insightfully. This may mean setting healthy boundaries on our use of electronic devices, dedicating time to silence and reflection, as Psalm 46 verse 10 teaches us, Be still, and know that I am God. As we do so, we can find balance and use technology to glorify God and build others up. Growing global instability, evidenced by conflicts, economic crises and natural disasters, can easily generate fear and anxiety. However, as followers of Christ, we are called to a different perspective. Jesus assures us in John 16 verse 33, In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This promise is not a shield against hardship but an anchor in the midst of life's storms. We practice this trust when we choose gratitude over complaining, when we reach out to help those in need in times of crisis, and when we keep our inner peace anchored in Christ, even when the world around us seems to fall apart. The erosion of traditional moral values is one of the defining challenges of our age. We live in a world where societal norms are shifting rapidly, often disregarding timeless principles that have served as moral anchors for generations. This decline is not just a social issue but a spiritual one, signaling a deeper departure from God's design and an embrace of moral relativism. The idea that truth and morality are subjective and can vary based on individual preferences or cultural trends. As followers of Christ, this presents us with a profound challenge, to stand firm in our faith while engaging with a world that increasingly celebrates values contrary to biblical teachings. In Matthew 5 verses 13 to 16, Jesus calls us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt preserves, purifies and enhances flavor, symbolizing our role in preserving moral truth and purifying a decaying society. Light, on the other hand, illuminates darkness, representing our responsibility to bring hope, truth and clarity to a world often clouded by confusion and sin. To fulfill this calling we must live with integrity and compassion demonstrating the character of Christ in every aspect of our lives. Living as salt and light does not mean adopting a judgmental or condemning attitude. On the contrary, it requires us to approach others with humility, love and a deep understanding of their struggles. 
Jesus himself set the ultimate example of this balance. While he never compromised on truth, he consistently extended grace and compassion to those he encountered. His interactions with the Samaritan woman at the well, John 4, the adulterous woman, John 8, and countless others reveal his ability to confront sin without alienating or dehumanizing the sinner. He called people to repentance not through harsh condemnation but by showing them the love of God and offering a better way. In practical terms, living with integrity and compassion involves aligning our words and actions with the teachings of Christ. It begins with simple, everyday choices, showing kindness to a stranger, being honest in our business dealings, and maintaining faithfulness in our relationships. These acts may seem small, but they carry immense power in a world where dishonesty, self-interest and broken commitments are increasingly normalized. By consistently choosing integrity, we reflect the unchanging nature of God, whose faithfulness and righteousness are the bedrock of our faith. Defending the truth with love is another crucial aspect of our calling. This means standing firm on biblical principles even when they are unpopular or countercultural. However, it is vital that we do so with gentleness and respect, as instructed in 1 Peter 3 verse 15. Truth, when delivered without love, can become a weapon that wounds rather than heals. Conversely, love without truth risks enabling harmful behaviors or diluting the transformative power of the gospel. The balance lies in speaking truth with compassion, ensuring that our words are guided by the Holy Spirit and motivated by a genuine desire to see others experience the freedom and joy found in Christ. Our lives must serve as a testimony to the world, offering an attractive alternative to the moral corruption around us. This is not achieved by isolating ourselves from society or adopting an attitude of superiority but by engaging the world with the transformative power of the gospel. When we live out the values of Christ, love, humility, patience, generosity and forgiveness, we shine a light that draws others to Him. Our actions become a reflection of God's kingdom, showing that there is a better way to live, a way rooted in eternal truths rather than fleeting cultural trends. Moreover, resisting the erosion of moral values requires intentionality in nurturing our spiritual growth. It is impossible to stand firm in our faith without a deep and consistent relationship with God. This involves regular prayer, studying scripture, and participating in a faith community that encourages and holds us accountable. As we grow in our understanding of God's word, we become better equipped to discern right from wrong and to navigate the complexities of living as Christians in a secular world. Finally, we must recognize that living as salt and light is not just about individual actions but also about influencing the broader culture. This can involve advocating for justice, supporting policies that align with biblical values, and using our platforms, whether in the workplace, social media, or our communities, to promote truth and righteousness. While we may not always see immediate results, we can trust that God is working through our efforts to accomplish His purposes. In summary, the erosion of traditional moral values challenges us to live counterculturally with integrity and compassion. By embodying the character of Christ, extending kindness and love, standing firm in truth, and engaging the world with humility, we fulfill our calling to be salt and light. In doing so, we not only resist the moral decay around us but also point others to the hope and redemption found in Jesus. This is our privilege and responsibility as His followers a calling that requires courage, faith, and an unwavering commitment to the truth of the gospel. The increase in religious persecution in various parts of the world reminds us of Jesus' words in Matthew 5 verses 10 to 12, where he speaks about the beatitudes of the persecuted. While we may not face direct persecution, we are called to stand in solidarity with those who suffer for their faith. This can manifest through intercessory prayers, supporting organizations working with persecuted Christians, or simply sharing their stories to raise awareness. Moreover, this reality challenges us to deepen our own faith, asking ourselves if we would be willing to remain faithful to Christ in the face of adversity. Global unification and advances toward a unified world government, as predicted in biblical prophecies, invite us to re-examine our heavenly citizenship. Peter reminds us in 1 Peter 2 verse 11 that we are sojourners and strangers in this world. This does not mean that we should isolate ourselves from society, but rather maintain an eternal perspective in our decisions and priorities. We can do this by getting involved in our local communities, participating in the political process with wisdom and integrity, but always remembering that our ultimate loyalty is to the kingdom of God. This posture helps us navigate the complexities of an increasingly interconnected world with discernment and faithfulness. As we progress, it is crucial to remember that these signs are not random but woven into a larger divine narrative. Each sign invites us to align ourselves closer with God's eternal purposes. 
let's continue this reflection by delving even deeper into the lessons these signs hold for our spiritual growth and readiness for Christ's return. Climate change and natural disasters, signs mentioned by Jesus in Luke 21 verses 25 to 26, call us to a responsible stewardship of God's creation. Genesis 2 verse 15 reminds us that we were placed in the garden to cultivate it and keep it. This responsibility continues today. We can answer this call through lifestyle choices that respect the environment, supporting conservation initiatives, and being active voices for good stewardship of natural resources. Additionally, these events remind us of our dependence on God and the fragility of life, encouraging us to live each day with purpose and gratitude. Finally, the fulfillment of prophecies related to Israel and the Middle East invites us to a deeper understanding of God's redemptive plan. Romans 11 verses 25 to 27 talks about the mystery surrounding Israel and the Gentiles in the plan of salvation. It calls us to a renewed appreciation of God's faithfulness to His promises and to a love for the Jews and for all peoples. We can express this through prayers for peace in Jerusalem, as Psalm 122 verse 6 instructs us, supporting ministries that build bridges between Jews and Arabs, and studying scripture to better understand the historical and prophetic context of our faith. This expanded perspective helps us view current events through the lens of God's redemptive narrative. As the signs of the times grow increasingly evident, we are invited to step into a deeper and more authentic Christian life. This invitation is not one of fear or inactivity but a summons to embrace an active and transformative faith that impacts every area of our lives. The challenges of these days call us to rise above complacency and live with purpose, intention, and spiritual resilience. Paul's exhortation in Ephesians 5 verses 15 to 16 serves as a powerful reminder, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. In these times of uncertainty, wisdom becomes an essential guide, leading us to spiritual vigilance and discernment. Living wisely means recognizing the urgency of the moment and using our time for what truly matters. The fleeting nature of life, coupled with the pressing realities of the world, challenges us to align our priorities with God's eternal purposes. This doesn't mean living in fear or anxiety about what lies ahead but adopting a proactive mindset, grounded in trust and faith in God. It is a call to make each day count, not through worldly achievements or pursuits but through a life devoted to God's kingdom, characterized by love, service and obedience. One of the most practical ways to cultivate this transformative faith is by beginning each day with intentional stillness before God. In the midst of an ever-changing and often chaotic world, the act of setting aside time for quiet reflection and prayer is a powerful anchor for the soul. This sacred time allows us to recalibrate our hearts and minds, centering them on Christ and His truth. As we meditate on Scripture, we are reminded of God's promises, His character and His plan for our lives. These moments of stillness are not merely about reading words on a page but allowing those words to shape and transform us from within. Seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit during this time is also crucial. The Holy Spirit is our counselor, comforter, and guide, equipping us with the wisdom and strength needed to navigate the complexities of life. When we invite the Holy Spirit into our daily routines, we gain clarity about God's will, discernment to make righteous decisions, and courage to walk the narrow path, even when it is difficult. This connection with the Spirit fuels our faith, enabling us to face each day with confidence and hope. Living a deeper Christian life also involves an intentional commitment to grow spiritually. This means going beyond surface-level faith and engaging in practices that deepen our relationship with God. Consistent prayer, worship, Bible study, and fellowship with other believers are vital components of this journey. They not only strengthen our faith but also create a supportive community where we can encourage and hold one another accountable. In addition to personal spiritual disciplines, an authentic Christian life requires us to reflect Christ's love and truth in our interactions with others. Each day presents countless opportunities to be a witness to God's grace, whether through acts of kindness, words of encouragement, or simply being present for someone in need. These small, intentional gestures have the power to demonstrate the transformative work of Christ in our lives, drawing others to Him. Moreover, living authentically as Christians means cultivating a sense of gratitude and joy, even in challenging circumstances. The ever-changing world around us can often feel overwhelming, but as believers, we are called to focus on the eternal hope we have in Christ. This perspective allows us to face trials with resilience and faith, knowing that God is in control and that His purposes will ultimately prevail. Gratitude transforms our outlook, helping us to see blessings even in the midst of difficulties, 
and joy becomes a testimony of God's faithfulness. Walking wisely and redeeming the time also means being intentional about how we spend our energy and resources. It challenges us to evaluate whether our choices align with God's priorities. Are we investing our time in things of eternal value, or are we distracted by temporary concerns? Are we using our talents to serve others and glorify God, or are we caught up in self-serving pursuits? These are questions we must ask daily, ensuring that our lives reflect the principles of God's kingdom. Finally, an authentic Christian life is one that remains anchored in hope. As the world changes and challenges increase, our hope in Christ becomes a stabilizing force. This hope is not based on circumstances but on the unchanging nature of God and the promises of His Word. It compels us to persevere, to trust in God's plan, and to look forward to the fulfillment of His purposes. By living with this eternal perspective, we not only strengthen our own faith but also inspire those around us to seek the same hope and peace found in Christ. In summary, the intensifying signs of the times call us to live with greater spiritual depth and authenticity. This involves walking wisely, seeking God daily, reflecting His love in our actions, and maintaining an eternal perspective. It is a life marked by purpose, faith, and a commitment to glorify God in all we do. As we embrace this calling, we not only prepare ourselves for what lies ahead but also become vessels of God's grace, bringing light and hope to a world in desperate need. This habit anchors us in God, preparing us to face the challenges of the day with faith and courage. In a world marked by uncertainty and fear, our unwavering trust in God becomes a powerful witness. Isaiah 26 verse 3 reminds us that God will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind is set on Him. This peace is not a denial of reality but a profound tranquility that comes from knowing that we are in the hands of a sovereign God. We practice this trust when we choose not to be overwhelmed by anxiety in the face of alarming news but rather turn to God in prayer. We can cultivate a spirit of gratitude, acknowledging God's blessings even during difficult times. As we do so, we not only strengthen our own faith but also become beacons of hope for those around us who may be struggling with fear and uncertainty. Perseverance in challenging times is a hallmark of the disciple of Christ. James encourages us to consider it a cause of great joy to experience various trials, knowing that the testing of our faith produces endurance. This perseverance is not a passive resistance but an active force that propels us forward. In the midst of difficulties, we are called to keep our focus on Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. We can do this by constantly reminding ourselves of God's promises, sharing our burdens with trusted brothers, and seeking opportunities for growth in every challenge. Perseverance manifests itself in the consistency of our walk with God, faithfulness in small things, and the determination to keep doing good, even when we don't see immediate results. Sacrificial love, exemplified by Christ, must be our response to the challenges of the last times. John reminds us that there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. In an increasingly polarized and selfish world, we are called to be countercultural in our display of love. This can mean forgiving when it's hard, serving when we're tired, or standing up for the marginalized when it's unpopular. Sacrificial love manifests itself in practical acts of kindness, helping a neighbor in need, mentoring someone younger in the faith, or offering hospitality to a stranger may seem like small, everyday actions but in the eyes of God, they carry immense significance. These acts of kindness are not merely good deeds, they are tangible expressions of God's love and grace, bringing the kingdom of God into action in the world around us. In a society that often feels divided, impersonal and self-centered, even the simplest gestures of care and compassion can shine like a beacon, pointing others to the transforming power of the gospel. When we help a neighbor in need, we demonstrate the heart of Christ who consistently prioritize the needs of others. This could mean assisting someone with a task they cannot handle alone, lending a listening ear during a difficult time, or simply offering encouragement to someone feeling burdened. These moments of connection remind us that we are called to bear one another's burdens, Galatians 6 verse 2, building bonds of community and demonstrating the selfless love of Christ in practical, impactful ways. Mentoring someone younger in the faith is another profound way to live out the gospel. Discipleship is at the core of the Christian mission and investing in the spiritual growth of others fulfills Jesus' command to make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28 verse 19. By walking alongside someone sharing wisdom from your own faith journey, and praying for their growth, you not only help them deepen their relationship with Christ but also multiply the impact of God's work in the world. Mentorship does not require perfection or extraordinary theological knowledge, just a willingness to share your time, experiences and encouragement with humility and love. 
offering hospitality to a stranger is yet another way to demonstrate the transformative power of God's love. In a world where many people feel isolated or unwelcome, opening your home or extending an invitation for fellowship can provide a sense of belonging and warmth that reflects the inclusive nature of the gospel. Hospitality, as seen in scripture, is a vital expression of God's heart, from Abraham welcoming strangers under the oaks of Mamre, Genesis 18, to Jesus eating with sinners and outcasts. Each act of hospitality, no matter how small, communicates to others that they are valued and loved by God. Every act of love, whether grand or seemingly insignificant, is a powerful declaration of the kingdom of God in action. It is a way of proclaiming, through deeds rather than words alone, the reality of God's presence and His transformative power in our lives. These acts of love embody the teachings of 1 John 3 verse 18, which reminds us to love not with words or speech but with actions and in truth, in living out this command, we become living testimonies of the gospel's ability to change hearts, relationships and communities. Moreover, these acts of kindness resonate deeply in a world that yearns for authenticity and compassion. People are not only drawn to what we say but, more importantly, to how we live. A life marked by love, generosity and service provides a stark contrast to a culture often consumed by self-interest. It is through these small but intentional acts of love that others see Christ in us and are inspired to seek the source of that love for themselves. These acts of love also ripple beyond their immediate impact. When we help a neighbor, mentor a young believer, or welcome a stranger, we plant seeds of the gospel that God can nurture and grow. The person we help today may go on to help others tomorrow, creating a chain reaction of kindness, compassion, and faith that expands far beyond what we can see. Finally, Living out this love requires a heart that is rooted in Christ and open to His leading. It means being attentive to the needs around us and willing to step out of our comfort zones to meet them. It also involves surrendering our time, resources and energy to God, trusting that He will use our efforts, no matter how small, for His glory. In conclusion, helping a neighbor, mentoring a fellow believer or offering hospitality are far more than good deeds. They are sacred opportunities to embody the gospel and advance God's kingdom. Each act of love, no matter how small, reflects the character of Christ and serves as a living testimony of His transformative power. In a world longing for genuine care and compassion, these simple actions can make an eternal impact, drawing others closer to God and His purpose for their lives. Responsible stewardship of our resources becomes even more crucial as the signs of the times intensify. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 25 about the importance of being faithful stewards. This applies not only to our material possessions but also to our time, talents and relationships. In a world that values consumerism and hoarding, we are called to live with simplicity and generosity. This may involve adopting a more sustainable lifestyle, using our financial resources wisely to support kingdom causes, and intentionally investing in relationships that build and encourage. Good stewardship also includes caring for our physical and mental health, recognizing that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. By wisely managing what God has entrusted to us, we are better prepared to serve Him and others, regardless of the circumstances we may face. Commitment to biblical truth is critical in an age of relativism and deception. Paul warns in 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 to 4 of a time when people will not endure sound doctrine. As followers of Christ, we are called to stand on the truth of Scripture, studying it diligently and applying it to our daily lives. This requires discernment to distinguish between truth and error and courage to remain faithful to God's word, even when it is unpopular. We can cultivate this commitment through regular Bible study, participating in faith communities that value sound teaching, and seeking out spiritual mentors who can guide us on our faith journey. At the same time, we should approach others with humility and grace, recognizing that we are all on a journey of growth and understanding. Intercessory prayer becomes a powerful weapon in turbulent times. Paul exhorts us in 1 Timothy 2 verses 1-2 to make supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving for all men, for kings, and for all who exercise authority. Intercession connects us to God's heart and aligns us with His purposes. We can establish regular times of prayer, interceding for our family, church, community, and nation. Praying for world leaders, for peace in conflict areas, and for spreading the gospel in unreached places is a powerful way to participate in God's work in the world. Additionally, intercession keeps us sensitive to the needs of others, cultivating a compassionate heart and a global perspective. As we pray we can expect to see God act in surprising ways, transforming situations and hearts. Finally, the call to be light in the midst of darkness remains our primary mission. 
Jesus tells us in Matthew 5 verses 14 to 16 that we are the light of the world and that our light is to shine before men. In a world that seems increasingly bleak, our life of faith, hope, and love becomes a beacon of hope. This is manifested in the integrity of our actions, the compassion of our words, and the consistency of our witness. We can be light through unexpected acts of kindness, timely words of encouragement, and a constant presence of peace in the midst of chaos. As we live in this way, we not only point others to Christ but also prepare for His return as faithful servants who will be found watchful and active in the work of the kingdom when the Master returns. As we contemplate the signs of the times, we are confronted with an undeniable reality. We live in a crucial time in history. Jesus' words at Matthew 24 verse 33 echo with renewed urgency. So you also, when you see all these things, know that He is near at the doors. This closeness is not a reason for fear but a call to spiritual vigilance and concrete action. Every sign we observe around us is a vivid reminder that our faith is not a theological abstraction but a living reality that should permeate every aspect of our existence. We are summoned to a life of purpose and intentionality, recognizing that every choice we make, every word we utter, and every action we take carries eternal weight. As stewards of the time entrusted to us, we must ask ourselves daily, how am I living in the light of eternity? Am I ready for Christ's return? The urgency of the times calls us to a renewed commitment to the Great Commission. Jesus commands us in Mark 16 verse 15 to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This commandment takes on an even deeper dimension as the signs of the times intensify. We cannot afford to be passive spectators. We are called to be active ambassadors of the Kingdom of God. That means embracing opportunities to share our faith with courage and compassion whether in the workplace, in the neighborhood, or on social media. Every interaction becomes a chance to sow hope in a world desperate for answers. We must ask ourselves, how can I be a more effective instrument of God's love and truth? What skills or resources can I develop to reach the lost more effectively? Continuous personal transformation is imperative in the face of the challenges we face. Paul exhorts us in Romans 12 verse 2 not to be conformed to this world but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. This renewal is not a one-time event but a daily process of alignment with God's will. As the signs of the times unfold, we are called to a deeper level of sanctification and spiritual maturity. This involves an honest examination of our priorities, habits, and relationships. Are we truly living in ways that reflect our hope in Christ? Are our daily choices bringing us closer to or further away from God? The transformation we seek is not only for our personal benefit but to become more effective witnesses of the transforming power of the gospel in a world that yearns for authenticity. Cultivating a resilient faith community becomes increasingly crucial. Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25 reminds us of the importance of coming together and encouraging one another, even more so as we see the day approaching. In a world marked by division and isolation, the church is called to be a beacon of unity and love. This requires an intentional commitment to authentic communion, overcoming barriers of age, culture, and personal preferences. How can we strengthen the bonds within our faith community? What practical steps can we take to create an environment where mutual discipleship and spiritual support flourish? The resilient church we are called to build is not a refuge from the world but a base of operations to impact the world with the love of Christ. The wise stewardship of the resources that God has entrusted to us takes on a new dimension of urgency. Jesus teaches us in Luke 16 verses 10 to 11 that faithfulness in small things is a precursor to faithfulness in big things. As the signs of the times intensify, we are challenged to reevaluate how we are using our time, talents, and treasures. Are we investing in things of eternal value, or are we distracted by what is transitory? Does the way we manage our financial resources reflect our trust in God and our priority in advancing His kingdom? We are called to a life of radical generosity and intentional simplicity, recognizing that everything we have belongs to God and should be used for His glory. This wise stewardship not only prepares us for eternity but also serves as a powerful testimony in a world obsessed with materialism. The commitment to intercessory prayer becomes an indispensable spiritual weapon. Ephesians 6 verse 18 exhorts us to pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all prayer and supplication. In times of uncertainty and turmoil, Prayer is not just a refuge but an active force that shapes reality according to God's purposes. We are called to a life of fervent intercession, not only for our personal needs but for the destinies of nations, for peace in areas of conflict, and for the salvation of the lost. How can we develop a more consistent and impactful prayer life? What spiritual disciplines can we adopt to keep our connection with God vibrant and our intercession effective? 
Persistent, faith-filled prayer is our front line in the spiritual battle that intensifies in the last days. Cultivating a kingdom mindset becomes essential as we navigate the challenges of the end times. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 6 verse 33 to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. This primordial search must shape our worldview, our decisions and our interactions. In a global landscape of polarization and conflict, we are called to be ambassadors of reconciliation and peace. How can we maintain an eternal perspective in the midst of the pressures of everyday life? How does our identity as citizens of the celestial kingdom influence our earthly choices? Cultivating a kingdom mindset means living with one foot in eternity and the other firmly planted in the realities of the present, always seeking to align our will with God's and His redemptive purposes for humanity. Finally, we are called to a life of contagious hope. Peter exhorts us in 1 Peter 3 verse 15 to always be prepared to answer anyone who asks us for a reason for the hope that is in us. In an increasingly hopeless world, our unwavering confidence in Christ's return and God's ultimate victory should shine like a beacon. This hope is not an escape from reality but an anchor that allows us to face challenges with courage and perseverance. How can we cultivate and express this hope in ways that draw others to Christ? How does our expectation of the Lord's return influence our daily priorities and relationships? Living with eschatological hope means embracing each day as an opportunity to reflect the light of Christ, knowing that our work in the Lord is not in vain and that the best is yet to come. In light of the ten signs of the end times we have examined, it is clear that we live in a crucial time in history. These signs are not a reason for fear but a call to spiritual vigilance, concrete action, and a deeper faith. We are challenged to live with purpose to share the gospel urgently, and to be light in an increasingly dark world. May we respond to this call with courage, wisdom, and love, always ready for the return of our Lord. Now let's unite in prayer. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace with humble and expectant hearts. In a world that seems to crumble around us, you remain unchanged, our refuge and fortress. Lord, before the signs of the times that we see being fulfilled, we cry out for your mercy and grace. Pour out upon us a fresh anointing, a new fervor to serve as your ambassadors in these last days. May your Holy Spirit enable us to be courageous witnesses, proclaiming your truth with boldness and love. Father, we ask for discernment to recognize the signs of the times and wisdom to navigate through these challenging days. May our faith be strengthened, our hope renewed and our love deepened. Lord, use us as instruments of your peace and reconciliation in a divided and wounded world. Almighty God, we intercede for those who do not yet know you. In thy mercy, open the spiritual eyes of the lost, break hardened hearts, and draw many to thee before it is too late. Father, we pray for a global revival, a powerful outpouring of your spirit that will awaken your church and reach the nations. May there be a bountiful harvest of souls in these last days. Lord, give us a compassionate heart for the lost and broken, and an unwavering passion for your word. Strengthen us to resist the temptations and deceptions of these perilous times. May we be found faithful, watching and praying when you return. Father, in the face of the challenges we face, we remember that the battle is yours. We trust in your sovereignty and submit to your perfect will. Holy Spirit, we invite you to move mightily in our lives and in our nation. It comes like a rushing wind, renews our minds, purifies our hearts and ignites our passion for Jesus. May thy fire consume all that is not of thee and refine us like pure gold. Lord, before the signs of the times, we ask you to clothe us with your spiritual armor. Fortify us to stand firm against the enemy's strategies. It gives us the discernment to recognize the truth in the midst of so many deceptions and the courage to stand up for it, even if it means facing persecution. Father, we pray for our leaders, both in the church and in government. Give them divine wisdom to guide your people and our nation in righteousness. May your church be a beacon of hope and a refuge of love in times of darkness. Lord Jesus, we long for your return. As we wait, help us to live each day with eternal purpose by investing our time, talents, and resources in advancing your kingdom. May we be found as faithful servants, multiplying what you have entrusted to us. Father, we pray for Israel and the fulfillment of your prophetic purposes. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of the Jewish people. Lord, in the face of the signs of the times, we renew our commitment to you. Use us as you please for the glory of your name. May our lives be a living testimony of your love and transforming power. We prepare our hearts for the great day of thy return, crying out Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. We pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, after this powerful journey through the signs of the times and this moment of fervent prayer, 
I feel compelled to invite you to go even deeper into this journey of faith and spiritual preparation. The times in which we live require vigilance and a continuous commitment to the Word of God and the communion of saints. Therefore, I invite you to subscribe to our channel right now and activate the notification bell. By doing so, you will be connecting with a community of believers dedicated to discerning the signs of the times and living a life of purpose and impact for the Kingdom of God. Every video, every message, every moment of prayer shared here is an opportunity for spiritual growth and preparation for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't miss out on any content that could be crucial to your spiritual journey in these last days. Join us, be part of this family in faith and together, let us keep watchful, praying and proclaiming the good news of the gospel until he comes. Sign up now, activate the bell and let's walk together on this journey of faith, hope and love, always attentive to the signs of the times and God's call to our lives. May God bless you richly.